Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, the first of our Holy Week services for uh, 2020. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, it's very unusual circumstances in which we are bringing you these services. Uh, but we hope that over the coming week, as we follow through John's account of some of the key events in the last week of Jesus's life, that even though we're not together physically, that as we meet together online, that we may still experience God speaking to us and God's presence with us at this important time of the year. Yesterday in our worship, we focused on Jesus's entry into Jerusalem on what we now know as Palm Sunday. We're going to pick up the story in the second half of chapter 12 this morning. And we're going to look at what happened the day after those events in Jerusalem on that day. So let me read to you from uh, John chapter 12 and uh, verses uh, 20 through to 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip turn, in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless an ear of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd was there and heard it said, and those who heard it said it had thundered, over said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. John has taken the first 12 chapters of his book to cover three years of Jesus's life in ministry. Now, at the halfway point of the gospel, he's going to take the rest of the gospel to cover just one week of Jesus's life. That says something, doesn't it, about the importance of this week and the events which we remember in them. Yesterday, we uh, remembered that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We remembered the noise and the colour. The singing, the calling out, the waving of palm branches, the excitement of that day as Jesus was apparently welcomed into Jerusalem. Now we come to the morning after the night before. We all know what it's like to feel a sense of anticlimax in life. The morning after the night before. The morning after the great celebration. The morning after the fantastic victory parade. For some of us, we might relate to it in terms of real life events. The morning after our favourite team won the cup. The morning after the wedding of a friend or a family member. The morning after... Exams are finished. The morning after 
passing an exam, the morning after, all sorts of things. And after the celebration, often there is a sense of anticlimax. And as the disciples woke up on that Monday morning, maybe for them there was a sense of anticlimax. As they thought back to the previous day, the excitement and exuberance of the parade into Jerusalem, Jesus being proclaimed king, and now they woke up on Monday morning, still thinking about that, but also facing up to the reality of a Monday morning. Jesus doesn't see this, though, as an anticlimax. Far from it. Jesus sees it as actually the climax, not the anticlimax, of his ministry. Verse 22, he reminds us, uh, sorry, verse 23, he reminds us that the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Six times in John's gospel up to this point, he has said, my hour has not yet come. The hour of my glorification has not yet come. But now in verse 22, he says, the hour of my glorification has come. The hour of his glorification wasn't his entry into Jerusalem. It wasn't that triumphant reception that he received. Jesus doesn't say yesterday the hour of my glory came. He says now the hour of my glory has come. Maybe it's in that sense of anticlimax. that we actually realise that what God is doing in our lives is something really significant. That yes, he is present with us in our joys and celebrations, but he is present with us on this Monday morning, particularly in the current circumstances, where life can feel like a huge anticlimax. Jesus reminds them that the hour of glory is indeed about to come, although not in a way that they assumed it would. In these verses, Jesus is preparing the ground, quite literally, as we see in the following verses. He gives the image of a seed being buried in the ground. And he reminds us that a seed can only bear fruit after it's been buried in the ground. The seed brings forth fruit from being buried in the ground. And just as Jesus is pointing here to his forthcoming death, when he would die and he would be buried, and out of his death and burial would come the fruit of resurrection. So he is saying to us this morning, I want you to bear fruit in your life. But to bear fruit in your life, you have to first of all be dead and buried. Dead and buried to yourself, to your dreams, to your ambitions, to the way you want to live your life. And when we die and come alive to Christ, then we can bear fruit. That fruit of the spirit that is such a, a big theme in the New Testament. But Jesus says for our lives to bear fruit, we must first of all die and be buried. Just as he was going to experience, he invites us to follow in the same way. And then he changes the image. He then talks about not being buried, but being lifted up, lifted up. Verse 32, when I am lifted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. He's pointing, as he observes there, to the kind of death by which he would die. 
he would be literally physically lifted up on a cross in death. But Jesus, as we keep reminding ourselves, is someone greater pointing to someone, something bigger. Because of the character of the one who was lifted up, that lifting up on the cross would not be a defeat. It would be a victory. Because it was in his lifting up in death that he and those who follow could be raised to life. John's purpose was that we might experience life to the full in Jesus' name. But for us to experience life to the full, we have to first of all be buried and rise again. Jesus is going to be lifted up. The hour for that physical event is, is fast drawing near. But when John uses that phrase lifted up, he's not just talking about the crucifixion. He's talking about the whole of what Jesus's ministry was, that it would lift up God and he would be lifted up in glory as God's son here on earth, as God become flesh, as God is the one who lived among us. I want to say something that might sound heretical when I say it first. We're not saved by the cross. Hmm? <laughs> what do I mean by that? We're not saved by wearing a cross on a chain around our neck. We're not saved by making the sign of the cross in church or in life. We're not saved by putting a cross up in our windows at Easter. None of those are bad things to do, but we're not saved by the cross in itself. We're saved by the one who the cross points to. We're saved by the one who died on a cross. Do you notice what Jesus says? Verse 32. I am lifted up from the earth and then I will draw all men to myself. We are saved by being drawn to Jesus himself. We're not saved by the cross as an object. We're saved by the one who died on the cross. The cross is a symbol of death, a symbol of a cruel method of execution. But we are saved by the one who died on the cross. That is why his death on the cross was his hour of glory. As we walk the journey towards his hour of glory this week in our services. May we look to the cross, yes, but may we above all else look to the one who died on the cross. The one who wants to draw us to himself this week. The one who wants to draw us to himself to receive his salvation. The one who wants to draw us to himself that we might receive this life to the full. The one who wants to draw us to himself. That we may go deeper in relationship with him. The hour has come, says Jesus. And my prayer is that the hour will come for many of us this week, the hour of our salvation, the hour of us proclaiming Jesus to be our Saviour and our Lord. God bless you today. Amen.